It's the morning star drive on 17.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive, you know Hey guys, how's it going? It's Wednesday, July 14th, and this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So what is going on today? It is a wonderful Wednesday, and we are going to get some coronavirus updates, current news from around the world, realizing from the Tuesday message, and of course, we have victory rhymes from Young Say. All right, guys, how is your day? It is the beginning of a new day. It is Wednesday. We have an awesome service tonight, so I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Um, let's start the day well with today's show. I just want to remind everyone to keep liking and commenting. I want to hear from you guys and see how you're doing. Write your questions, requests, testimonies, anything. Go ahead and put them. Uh, you can send them to me or put them in the comments. Uh, yesterday, what did we have? We had another vlog, and uh, it was a ghost story series, so go ahead and check that out. If you're a little bit squeamish when it comes to these ghost spiritual stories, uh, I advise you not to watch it even though you might want to watch it but uh, it is another fun story and also remember this week's Sunday edition I interviewed Tuli from Australia so make sure to catch that interview she's one of the first people to ever be evangelized in Australia great interview very honest and open uh, next Sunday edition of course another member from around the world uh, so look forward to another inspiring interview uh, on Monday of course we had uh, the Monday Zoom Bible study that's um, recommenced season 2 and uh, we have about 50 almost 50 newcomers coming out great series so far guys that was uh, number 2 just got put out onto Patreon, so if you want to go listen to those, uh, go ahead and join us on Patreon. All right, guys, so on this wonderful Wednesday, let us get into today's featured artist of the day. And of course, we have Juice Star Aiden Verdi from New Zealand. Really, really amazing. And uh, this is one of her latest singles. It's called Hot Guy in the Corner. And of course, it's talking about that feeling um, when you're... When you met the Lord for the first time, it's like that feeling of having that crush on that guy that that you really, you know, like that you really like. So that's why this this one is actually about the Lord, which is really, really cool how, uh, how she put it into this type of a story. Um, second, we have PGY from PMA in Korea, and this song is called City Night Soul. And last but not least, we have Amatsu Sora from Japan, uh, and he's singing a cover, John Legend's All of Me. All right, guys, so as we're here going into the... The 44th day of the prayer condition. I hope that all of you guys will be able to keep a little, uh, put a little prayer in for all these member artists from around the world. Who are you? A mystery. A little bit hard to see. I'm starting to believe You might be what I need Even in shadow you look so nice Can't wait to see you step into the bright light See my face. 
all your perfect imperfections. Give your all to me. I give my all to you. You're my end and my beginning. Even when I lose a win, 'cause I give you all of me, and you give me all. Times do I have to tell you? Even when you're crying, you're beautiful too. The world is breathing you down. I'm alone through every mood. You're my dance floor, you're my muse. My words, distraction, my rhythm and blues. I can't stop singing. It's breathing in my head for you. My hair's under water, but I'm breathing fine. You're crazy and I'm out of my mind. 'Cause all of me loves all of you. Love your curves and all your edges, all your perfect imperfections. Give your To me, I give my all to you. You're my end and my beginning. Even when I lose a win, 'cause I give you all of me, and you give me all of you. I'll give you all of me. Rub your curls and on your edges, all your perfect imperfections. Give your all to me. I give my all to you. You're my end and my beginning. Even when I lose the win, 'cause I give you all. Give you all of me, and you give me all of you. Oh. And there you have it. That is Amatsu Sora from Japan. I believe he's a lead singer of the the group The Sky. Uh, and that song was "All of Me," a cover of John Legend. Before that, PGY from PMA in Korean. That's City Night Soul. And the feature artist of the day is Juice Star Aiden Verdi from New Zealand with "Hot Guy in the Corner." All right, so let's get into some news. What's going on around the world? We'll start off with some coronavirus updates for today. Uh, in the world, there's now 188 million cases, four million deaths at a 2.15 percent mortality rate. Top five countries going by uh, daily infection rates: We have India, 30.9 million cases, 409,000 deaths. Russia, 5.8 million cases, 143,000 deaths. Uh, UK, 5.1 million cases, 128,000 deaths. Iran, Iran is new, 3.3 million cases, 86,000 deaths. And then Indonesia, once again with 2.5 million cases, 67,000 deaths. Now let's take a look at the daily infection rates, and we do have a change at the top of the order. And guess who's on top? It is Indonesia. Indonesia has hit 40,000 cases a day. Uh, they're on top for the first time. It's pretty crazy uh, how how fast they've accelerated. Uh, the UK is at 34,000. India at 30,000, Russia 25, and then Iran new on the block in fifth with 20,000 cases, and Brazil has been knocked out of the top five. Uh, look at let's look at uh, Southeast Asia over here. Inda, Indonesia 40,000 cases as we said already, number one in the world, and then Malaysia with 8,500, and then the Philippines with 5,200 cases in a single day. 
Uh, top three news. What's going on uh, around the world? Number one is lightning strikes in India has killed at least 38 people, guys. Lightning strikes have killed 38 people. So officials say that 20 people died in the western uh, Rajasthan state, while 18 others lost their lives in the other areas over the last 24 hours. Now, a majority of the deaths occurred in the western state of Rajasthan, where 11 people died after being struck by lightning near a watchtower at the 12th century Amber Fort, uh, police said. Now, this lightning strike killed at least 11 people and injured many more uh, in northern India on Sunday. The victims were taking selfies in the rain on top of a watchtower at the city's 12th century Amber Fort, a popular tourist attraction. You guys, you guys get that? 11 people died because they were taking t selfies selfies guys at a watchtower like this reminds me of like um of back to the future right but yeah a lot of people were killed from taking selfies how crazy that is the victims were taking selfies in the rain on top of a watchtower guys 27 people were on the tower and the wall of the fort when the incident happened and some reportedly jumped to the ground lightning uh, if you guys don't know this lightning in india it kills some 2,000 uh, 2,000 Indians on average per year. So this is not like an uncommon thing. 2,000 people die per year from lightning strikes in India. So that's pretty crazy. So I don't know if I would be the one that would be taking self self selfies in an, uh, a lightning strike, right? A senior police officer told the media that the most um, that most of the people among the dead at the Fort's Tower were young. You know. That's why, you know, I don't think old people take selfies, right? And Sunday alone saw nine more deaths from lightning strikes reported across Rajasthan state, where Jaipur is located, according to local media reports. The state's chief minister uh, has announced uh, that uh, 500,000 rupees, or that comes to about $6,700 US, as compensation for the families of those who have died. So uh, India's monsoon season, which sees heavy rains, typically lasts from June to September. And the Indian Meteorological Department has said that deaths by lightning strikes have doubled in the country since the 60s. And this is one of the reasons they cited, um, they're talking about like climate crisis. So the data says that lightning incidents too have increased by 30 to 40% since the early to mid 1990s. Uh, in 2018, the southern state of Andhra Pradesh recorded 36,749 lightning strikes in just 13 hours, right? So officials say that they are more common in areas with thinner tree cover, leaving people vulnerable to being struck. And safety tips when lightning strikes, uh, seek shelter inside a large building or a car, get out of wide open spaces away from exposed hilltops, and if you have nowhere to shelter, make yourself as small as a, small a target as possible by crouching down with your feet together, hands on knees, and head tucked in, and do not shelter beneath tall or isolated trees. If you're on water, get to the shore and off wide, uh, open beaches as quickly as possible. Right, so that is, I didn't know that 2,000 people died on average every year from lightning strikes in India. Uh, second news, we have Thailand. Thailand has now been hit by, by its worst COVID outbreak, and this is an economic risks are rising. Right, so Thailand introduces strict lockdown-like measures to rein in the virus, endangering an already badly hit economy. Thailand risks fueling its decade-high unemployment rate and household debt with the imposition of lockdown-like measures to contain the deadliest COVID outbreak to hit the nation. Now, the greater Bangkok area, accounting for about 50% of Thailand's gross domestic product, will shutter shopping malls, spas, massage, beauty clinics for at least two weeks starting Monday. And the mandatory work-from-home rule for most government employees, overnight curfews and curbs on domestic travel are set to hurt retailers, airlines, restaurant operators already reeling from some form of COVID restrictions for more than a year. Thailand is tightening restrictions to stem the spread of the more contagious Delta variant of COVID that's also fueled a surge in cases from Indonesia to Vietnam and scuppered their plans to open up borders. So... Uh, Thailand was once doing well, and now uh, they've been hit with this Delta variant, and it's going to go, it looks like they are going to be hit pretty strong. Uh, so let's see what happens and pray for Thailand too. P Thailand is right on the border of Malaysia. We, we can actually drive there from here. Uh, last but not least, the last of the three, three uh, news items, uh, Cuba protests. Thousands are rallying against the government. Thousands of Cubans have joined the biggest protests for decades against the island's communist government. They marched in cities, including the capital of Havana, shouting, down with the dictatorship. And in response, police used pepper spray and beat some of the demonstrators. Cubans have been angered by the collapse of the economy 
as well as by restrictions on civil liberties and the authorities' handling of the pandemic with record infections in recent days. The protesters were demanding a faster coronavirus vaccination program. Uh, last year, Cuba's state-controlled economy shrank by 11%, its worst decline in almost three decades, hit hard by the pandemic and U.S. sanctions imposed by the Trump administration. Thousands, thousands of pro-government supporters also took to the streets after the president went on television to urge them to defend the revolution, referring to the 1959 uprising, which ushered in decades of communist rule. So the president at the moment is Miguel Diaz-Canel, and he said that the protests were a provocation by mercenaries hired by the U.S. to destabilize the country, right? So he promised a revolutionary response. So that is quite interesting what's happening over there in Cuba. Let's hope that things don't get too crazy. Uh, like the protesters, you know, they voiced their anger over a shortage of vaccines. Country reported a record of nearly 7,000 daily infections and 47 deaths on Sunday. More than 1,500 COVID-related deaths have been reported since the start of the outbreak, right? So that is the top three news for today, which means uh, I do want to go into some sports, right? I know some of the guys have been asking for this type of thing too. Uh, sports news. Uh -huh, this is pretty crazy. Team USA is supposed to be the strongest, the juggernaut powerhouse of the world when it comes to men's basketball. And um, Team USA falls to 0-2 in Olympic exhibitions after another loss to Australia, right? So, you know, they're on their way to, uh, you know, they're trying to defend their fourth consecutive Olympic gold medal for ne uh, next month in Tokyo. But um, it is going to be pretty hard. They've already lost They've already lost uh, twice in a row. They lost to Nigeria the other day, and now Australia they lost to. They lost to Australia 91-83 to in Las Vegas. And, um, man, the last time they lost consecutive exhibitions uh, was dating to the 2019 World Cup where they finished 7th, right? So Team USA has lost four of its past five games. It also has lost two in a row now to Australia, a team expected to contend for the gold in Japan. So it was a better showing than their loss to Nigeria, but just, oh my gosh, twice in a row, I don't know what's going on. But um, let's see what's going to happen with, with Team USA in basketball. And then, of course, we have in baseball, we had the home run derby. during the, uh, That's what happens during the All-Star weekend. And Pete Alonso repeats as the home run derby champion. And uh, basically, he defeated the Baltimore Orioles' first baseman Trey Mancini to become the third back-to-back -back home run derby champion in front of a frenzied crowd sold out at Coors Field Alonzo recorded 74 home runs and last but not least we have the Stanley Cup for those of you who are hockey fans I'm Canadian I love hockey um the Stanley Cup the trophy has been dented yes because the Tampa Bay Lightning they just won the, the Stanley Cup five days ago and um this is their second parade in 10 months and what happened was um uh there's a picture that goes viral of the cup being significantly dented, right? So the, the cup was taken away right away and it's going for repairs. But this is not the first time it's happened like this. But those who don't know, the Stan Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, they won the Stanley Cup and the playoff MVP, the Conn Smythe Trophy winner was Andrea Veselevsky, uh, which is the goaltender. So great, great news for them. So I hope that you guys are getting up to date on some of the sports news also, all right? So that means uh, now that the worldly news is all over, we're going to go into something a little bit more spiritual. Right, we're going to something more spiritual. Yes, we're going to have a time of praise and worship. We're going to start with my beloved is like the sun. And then I am happy the new, the is I am happy the first version, but it was redone. And then we're going to end off with let's sing together. So as one body, body of the morning star drive, let's spend this time together giving glory, honor, and praise to the Holy Trinity. <laughs>
Sing these songs with me Lift up your praise Everyone let us sing Glorify the Trinity In a flash we transformed We become heaven's brides We are theirs for all time Sing about memories Stories we shared Everyone join in one heart Let's dance and sing Since we know the Trinity's ending That is Let's Sing Together, one of my favorite songs. And uh, before that was I Am Happy, the very, very first version, but it was re-recorded. So great job uh, to the IETT team for that. And my beloved is like the sun. Okay, guys, so we're going to get into some word study for today. And I know a lot of people really enjoy the word study part. It kind of, you know, we want to get a different take and different angles and views of when we see the word. And especially this week, it's about Thanksgiving and love. And I, th oh, the, the Tuesday morning message definitely had those two things. And especially talking about love itself, that everything is done because of love. So we need to be thankful. And I, I like the beginning part because the very first thing we need to be thankful for every single day. And he said, it's particularly for those who have been raptured. We must be thankful if we've been raptured. And we got to be thankful for this every single day. Don't just be thankful in the special times, right? E even if someone buys you the most expensive laptop, which is probably going to cost you, what, six, $7,000? It is nothing compared to what our parents have done for us for the past 20, 30 years. 
Like you couldn't even compare the amount of money that's been spent on us. And that's why we have to think about God and all the things he's done for us each and every day. And it is incomparable to anyone who gives us one special thing. We have to learn how to give thanks in everything that we do. Uh, I also like the, uh, the, the redefining of the word resurrection. And he said is to be revived, right? Revived. Be thankful that you have revived. And as we know as resurrection, we have been revived into lovers. And now we're being treated like lovers. So how amazing is that? We should be thankful that we have been revived into a lover. That's something we should be thankful for too. Not just the rapture, but being revived and being treated as a lover and knowing and God allowing us to treat him as a, a husband. So as we know that as, as history moves on, the level of love gets higher. Right? And if you think about, this is one of the most powerful statements that Sussie made is, I couldn't continue. I couldn't keep my faith if there was no love. Right? I couldn't keep my faith if there was no love. And if you think about this, uh, it means that keeping your faith is not an easy thing. Right? Because it requires the most powerful thing in this world, which is love. That without this love, no one would keep their faith. And I, I want, you know, everyone, take a look at your lives right now and all the different things, all the difficulties you went through. Imagine if there was no love. Like, you couldn't feel God's love. You couldn't see God's love. You couldn't hear God's. Imagine that if you couldn't hear, see, or any of these things. Could you continue in your faith doing pre-dawn every day, going to like three different services a week, coming to church all the time, refraining and stopping yourselves from sinning? Could you do keep this type of faith if there was no love? And the answer is no way. And if you think about it, in Sunseem's, like Sunseem's perspective, what was his life like? His life was 10 times, a thousand times harder than ours. Not eating for 40 days, not eating for 70 days, being alone in the mountains, Man, can you imagine how hard it must have been for him to keep his faith and how much harder it, it, it would have been if he couldn't receive love? If there was no love, could he keep that faith? And the answer is absolutely not. There's no way. There's no way he could. If we couldn't even do it at our level, can you imagine how hard it was at his level? Man, nothing happens without love. Nothing, right? Salvation is love. Rapture is love. Resurrection is love. There's nothing that happens without love. God sent Jesus because he loved us. That's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Right? God loved the world that he sent the bridegroom. Sunseem said, I live my life like this because I receive love from God. And in the most darkest of times, when I was in the mountains and I was alone, he came to me and he gave me the word. And if you think about this, why would anyone give you a word or give you words if you don't love? In other words, you probably, when you don't love someone, you give them the silent treatment. You don't care about them. And that's why this is the biggest thing we have to understand is God loves us. Wow, isn't that powerful? The greatest thing that we have to be thankful for is that God loves us. There's nothing greater than that. And this is why Sunseem gives glory. Sunseem gives thanksgiving. It's all because of love. And that's something that we all have to be thankful about in this life. It's really inspiring when you think about it, right? We have to give glory. We have to uh, be thankful. Uh, and, you know, of course, God too, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't receive glory if it doesn't fit the standard. And, you know, when we talk about it's not true, true or sincere, it's not accepted, we have to understand that, hey, it's the same with us. If someone is superficial in like in encouraging us or loving us or saying things to us, don't you think, you, would you accept it? Something, like, yeah, 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 you're like, this. like if they said it to me like that, I'd be like, oh, come on, just don't say it at all, right? And what God is saying is don't do it superficially, right? Like we have to do it in such a manner, right? In such a manner, like, Tonight, guys, when we go to Wednesday service, how will we prepare? How, how will we make it so sincere and truthful that when we come before God to listen to the Wednesday message, that God will accept the service that we give? Yeah, it's hard when you do it at home. It's hard when you do it alone. It is hard, but we have to be those that do what? We have to be those that really do it with truth and sincerity. And this last point I really like too is... Um, how clear Sunstream is when it comes to giving thanks. He says, I am super clear. 
I will tell you very clearly why I am thankful and in detail. And I will split my I'll split the sec I'll split my life into sections, right? And in those sections, I'll talk to you, I'll tell God of why I'm thankful in each and every one of those sections. I'm like, what? That's crazy, right? But that's how clear he is. Where God will say, Oh, he knows what I did. He really knew what I did. He really knew. And that's why we, you know, there's so many things to be thankful for. We have to be thankful and know that it is so huge. It is tremendous that God is giving us his love. Because of love, everything that God does, you know, everything that God has done for us, it's all because of love. And that is something, if you think about it, at that, that's a really inspiring level. We have to really, really say, wow, that's it. And we can be thankful now and just say, God, thank you so much for just loving me. How could, how could I have overlooked this one thing that you loved me that much? And I think, uh, it, yeah, the Tuesday morning message is really, really powerful. I hope it uh, continues on until uh, the Wednesday message too. Okay. All right, guys, that is the word study for today. I hope it's something that uh, opened your eyes a little bit uh, more to the Tuesday morning message, uh, which means we're going to move into uh, the song of choice for today. And this is an uh, uh, interesting song. It's from the 80s, right? And it's from a group called New Order. And this song is called Bizarre Love Triangle. And it's an English rock band. And they released this single in 1986, okay? And it reached the top five in the U.S. like dance, music, club, play, singles chart, number five in Australia, number one. It's just, it was really, it's a really, really... Um, yeah, it's a song that I think that everyone's going to enjoy. Uh, this is one of my favorite songs from the 80s. Bizarre Love Triangle, New Order. It was one of those songs that people in the 80s danced to, right? So I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> Oh, so 
there you go. That is a blast from the past. That is in, from the 80s. That is New Order with Bizarre Love Triangle. I hope you guys really enjoy that. It is so 80s synthesized pop, but I love it. It's, you know, it's way back in my childhood. So uh, thank you so much for listening to that, which leads us to the last section for today. It is Wednesday, and of course, we moved our section for uh, the Victory Rhymes by Young Said to Wednesdays instead. I hope you guys really, really enjoy this once again. Resurrected poetry of this time period. Everyone, please welcome Young What's up everyone and welcome to another segment of Victory Rhymes. I'm Yongse, I'm from South Africa, but I'm currently living in Korea at the moment and I'm happy to share another poem with you today. So as always, if you have any poetry you'd like me to share on this segment, you're more than welcome to send it to me through the email in the description box and I'd love to hear from you and feature your work. Okay, so before we get into it, I'm gonna do something new on this Victory Rhyme segment. I'm gonna share a Bible riddle with you. So see if you can get it, see if you can get the answer and if you can, then post it in the uh, comments, please. So this one is for the tennis players among us. And the riddle goes, where is the first tennis match mentioned in the Bible? Where is the first tennis match mentioned in the Bible? Okay, so think about it and let me know in the comments if you can get the answer and I'll reveal the answer in next week's segment. Now let's get into today's poem. So this poem was inspired by a message in which Sang Sinim encouraged us to catch all kinds of fish, even mermaids. And I love mermaids, like I am this I love unicorns and mermaids and all these like fantasy things. So when Sang Sinim was saying this in the message, I was obviously really inspired <laughs> so i was really inspired by that and then i wrote a poem about a mermaid so a mermaid is like this shining mysterious extremely rare almost impossible to see amazing creature so i interpreted it as finding a truly amazing life like this rare find incredible life so I will explain more about the poem in more detail after I read it. So let's listen to the poem called A Mermaid's Tale. It's hard to spot a mermaid these days, with oceans drowning in pollution, plastic and pests. How can a mermaid breathe? She suffocates and chokes in filthy waste, with pirates trying to chain her waist. Mermaids shine most brilliantly in pure water, clear currents where the sun's rays glisten in their eyes. If only a mermaid can dive into the water of life, she could do more than barely survive. So that was the poem, A Mermaid's Tale, spelled T-A-L-E. It's kind of a word play, uh, written by me. And this, this poem really uh, paints the picture. It's a really visual poem and it's about how this world is so polluted with the media and entertainment industry showing such rotten culture and such rotten content to even kids. It's almost impossible to escape it if you go out. Like if you go out shopping, you're gonna hear this filthy music in the shopping centers. You're gonna see the posters on the streets. It's just everywhere in the series and movies and everything. And all these like young people are exposed to this rotten culture so much. Then how difficult must it be for a pure hearted person to live in such a fallen world? They might be looking for something in life, searching for a purpose, something to live for, but they might be choking in all the fallen culture of the world. So yeah, thinking about that, I really wrote this poem. And then this person, this person who's really searching and struggling to survive, like like the poem says, like barely surviving in this dirty water in the world, this polluted, polluted water. They truly need the word. They really need the word for them to shine and to live the most meaningful and happy life. So we need to save those choking mermaids and get them out of the polluted water of the world and give them the water of life and weren't we those 
once those choking mermaids before. I definitely was a choking mermaid before. I was in the polluted water and barely surviving. And I was so incredibly happy the first time that I could taste that water of life and come out and live in this clear current, this water of life. And Sang Sim said in the Proverbs of 2013, October 23rd, he said, if a mermaid is in a sewer, everyone will see that and feel sorry. A mermaid must play in a lake. Then people will see the mermaid as being beautiful, see it as being mysterious or magical, and they will look up to it. If a mermaid is in a sewer, it does not shine. If it is in a lake, it shines. As a result, people will gather around. And then he also said in the Proverbs of 2012, October 24th. Don't have attachment to a corpse whose faith is dead and has been buried. Instead, hurry and evangelize. People say they like the dead person because they're thinking about old connections and stories. Yet in the large ocean live sharks, whales and mermaids in groups in the shallow water. They are looking for ways because they want to come up to land, but they are unable to come out because there is no water route. Hurry up and carry them, pick them up and hold them up and bring them out. Amen! Let's bring those mermaids out of the dirty water, out of the polluted, uh, dirty water of this world. And let's, let's save them and bring them into the water of life. Because there are those mermaids who are really choking and so desperate for the water of life. So let's bring them out, let's give them this precious water of life where they can do more than barely survive. And there's also a little music video, or can I call it a music video? It's like, it's more like a poem visual, a visual art, something I've made about this poem. And you can find it on the Victory Rhymes channel on YouTube. So if you just type in Victory Rhymes, uh, you'll find it. Or you can type in Victory Rhymes, A Mermaid's Tale. And then you can find this video uh, that is about this poem. Yeah, so this poem also really makes me think about this week's message of thanksgiving and love. And because there's so many things to give thanks for, so many things. And one of the things that I'm truly, truly thankful for is that God led me to the word, to the water of life. And that I could hear the word and I could accept and change and be transformed through the word and come out of the dirty water. I'm just really, truly, truly thankful. So this brings us to the end of today's segment of Victory Rhymes. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have an amazing day with the Lord. I'll be back again next week. This is Young Say. Goodbye. And there you go. That is Victory Rhymes by Yonsei in South Africa. Well, she's not in South She's from South Africa, but in Korea at the moment. Uh, thank you so much, Yonsei, for that wonderful, wonderful segment of Victory Rhymes. And yeah, she got a YouTube channel, so go ahead and check that out too. I'll put the link in the description. Guys, that is the last segment for today, but not the last thing for today. Why? Because we have an amazing event tonight for the Wednesday service. Everyone have an awesome Wednesday, and then we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. <laughs> It's the morning star drive on 17.8. You saw run up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know. I'm on the morning star drive, you know. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star driving